Bart Starr was my man. I idolized that guy. And I vividly remember how excited I was when my dad presented me with a kid's version of that number 15 Hall of Fame quarterback. I wore it everywhere. I had Bart's poster hung on my bedroom wall, and I mimicked his moves. And when becoming the quarterback of my youth football teams, there was only one jersey number considered. My 14-year-old self truly believed that I could become a version of him. But that dream was taken from me. Not due to lack of ability or willingness to put in the work, but because two coaches at a time when I needed them most didn't even care enough about me to notice a shoulder injury. All they could see was a quarterback who could no longer bring them victories. And all I could see was an environment where nothing could be questioned, not even my own pain. And their overzealous need to win, they referred to me as an embarrassment. They mocked me in front of my teammates and told me I was no longer wanted on offense. Their behaviors stole my confidence, my trust, my connection to the team. And worst of all, I allowed them to rob me of the joy of just playing the game. That was gone in a flash. And to be candid, it's uncomfortable to be vulnerable and share the story with you. Because I do not consider myself a victim. And I did turn out okay. At least my mom thought so. But what this series of events did do 46 years ago is not only put me on this stage today, it motivated me to start a company that helps coaches understand how their behavioral choices will either propel or inhibit the growth of student athletes. If a coach chooses to view success only through a lens of winning, they'll never be more than transactional. If a coach chooses to view success by how they impact the overall experience of a student athlete, they can become transformational. When winning defines success, transactional coaches can compromise standards. Athlete value is determined only by their skills, and what's most important to the overall development of athletes is neglected. When creating a positive experience becomes the true north. Transformational coaches will put relationships at the forefront. Creating a psychologically safe team environment is foundational, and success is quantified beyond victories. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, great, here we go again. Now the guy's going to talk about how winning isn't important, and we need to be soft. Coaches need to be soft on student-athletes, right? Wrong. The concept that winning isn't important is ridiculous. Because winning and losing are outcomes of competition. They're a measuring stick. And setting goals that involve winning, like conference and state championships, and national titles, are healthy and needed because goals increase team focus and discretionary effort. But for those of you who think it's okay to have winning at the forefront, consider this. 98% of all teams end their season with a loss. There's only one conference champ, one state champ, one national title winner. So then what? Does that mean there's a 98% failure rate in the coaching world? Does it mean 98% of student athletes are failures? And regarding the idea that coaches need to be soft on student athletes, <laughs> well, that's just wrong. Let me establish something. Our research has involved studying coaches across gyms and fields. We've documented more than 150,000 interactions between coaches and student athletes, encompassing everything from middle schools to colleges. And the data is clear. A coach's ability to create disciplines, to push and challenge athletes in a healthy way, are needed behaviors that enhance the experience. So the mentality that growth only occurs in a state of discomfort absolutely applies to the development of student athletes. Okay, so what is the student athlete experience? We define it like this, that through the eyes of a student athlete, their coach builds a trust-based relationship and provides a psychologically safe team environment that challenges each athlete physically and mentally to create growth 
in their respective sport. And when analyzing a coach's effect on this experience, our data has revealed six behavioral themes that shed light on coaching's impact. The first four of which coaches score well, with over 80% of student athletes giving their coaches positive scores. Communication, challenge, structure, and skill development. And the reason coaches score well in these themes, which by the way would even include my middle school coaches, is because these themes describe the traditional way they prepare athletes for competition, tactically and physically. I mean, think about it. Man, when practice starts, they get after it. They have drills and conditioning and game strategy and skill development. And when practice is over, they go home. And there's film to watch and opponents to study. I'm not saying these are negative behaviors. In fact, our research would indicate they are essential to becoming transformational. Unless they are so consuming, they leave no time to work on these two themes. Connection and psychological safety. The connection theme measures the depth and quality of respect, engagement, and trust between a coach and student athletes. Now, whether those athletes age is 14 or 24, they need to feel connected to their coaches or they may never be willing to share something as important as the state of their mental health or as simple as a shoulder injury. And the psych safety theme measures the coach's ability to create an environment where student athletes can be their authentic self without fear of negative consequences. Every coach wants their athletes to feel safe enough to play fearlessly. But if that's going to happen, coaches better not lose their minds when the ref makes a bad call or athletes make a mistake. Of the six themes, connection and psych safety are the two that are most foundational to creating a positive experience. The two that most differentiate between transactional versus transformational coaching and the two that receive the lowest scores. Now, for the record, it would be a rare coach that would choose to not connect or elect to create a psychologically unsafe environment. But the challenge is, most coaches don't know the strength of their connections or the psych safety of the environments they've created, which means... They don't know if they are transformational, which would describe Coach Corinne. Corinne was in her fourth year of coaching the varsity volleyball team. She's passionate, well-versed in the sport, fiercely competitive, and she cared deeply about her student-athletes. And her student-athletes also liked Corinne. They enjoyed playing for her, and overall, they were happy with the team. When researched, they made comments like, she tells me when I do something wrong, so I can fix it in the future. I know she expects a lot from everyone on the team, and I like it because she pushes me. Now, those are all examples of eh, transactional comments. And I'll never forget Corinne's reaction after reviewing her theme scores and learning that, like many coaches, she scored well in the first four themes, but only half of her athletes felt psychologically safe or believed they had a connection with her. She was so taken aback, her shaking voice articulated what turned out to be her greatest coaching epiphany. She said, Bill, don't my girls know how much I care about them? And I waited for it. Then she said, oh my gosh. They don't know. And in that moment, Corinne made a choice. After some self-reflection and before the next season began, she developed two new primary objectives. Number one, establish more meaningful relationships with their athletes. Number two, create an environment so they felt psychologically safe. To accomplish this, Corinne introduced four team values, none of which mentioned winning that all of her players could recite from memory. 
She held an overnight retreat with her team that focused solely on the development of relationships and strengthening of their minds. She took them to coffee to get to know them. She had her athletes set individual goal, goals and then coach held one-on-one -on -one meetings to review them. Corinne focused on being positive and calm every game, every practice. And speaking of practice, it no longer started with drills, but with each team member sharing the best part of their day and what they needed from other teammates to have a successful practice. You see, Corinne did something that so many believe is counterintuitive to winning. Compared to the year prior, her athletes spent less time in the gym working on skills and drills and more time away from the gym working on relationships, mindset, and team dynamics. That season, after choosing to move her primary focus away from winning, Corinne's theme scores all improved. But the two that matter most grew the most by more than 30%. And then when researched, her athletes made comments like, the one thing she's really good at is making sure she has good relationships with all of us. They go farther than you may think, and it makes me respect her more. And I'm able to enjoy every day I walk into the gym and I'm greeted by her. I just wanted to say how proud I am of you. You really have changed so much since my freshman year, and you've become such an awesome coach. I, I trust you 100% and working hard, and killing my body is so easy when I know it's at the end. Let's go get that hardware. <laughs> now, these are all examples of transformational comments. And because I am sure so many of you want to know, how did Corinne's transformational journey convert to performance? Well, her team was district champs for the first time in 19 years. State tournament semifinalists for the first time in 35 years. And without focusing on them, the team broke the school record for wins. However, they didn't get the hardware because like 98% of all teams, they lost their final game of the season. But I dare you to tell Corinne's athletes that their season was a failure. Remember this. It is not a coach's desire to win that makes them transactional. And it's certainly not creating strict disciplines or challenging athletes that makes for a poor experience. However, the student athlete experience will only improve if the team is led by a coach who improves. So if coaches want to have a positive impact that reaches beyond courts and fields, if they want to be a difference maker, if they, if they want to be able to recognize the next BART star, then they better learn to crawl into the lives of their athletes, connect with them, and make sure their environment feels psychologically safe. To do that is to become transformational. And that journey begins by making a choice. Thank you all very much.